If you were to summarize the theme of Leonardo da Vinci's life, the theme of this great university, the theme would be unification, unification of the world of art with the world of science. But when I was a child, I had two role models. One was Albert Einstein. If you were to summarize his life into one word, it would be unification. Unifying matter and energy, unifying space and time. And then he spent the last 30 years of his life chasing after the greatest unification of all time, the theory of everything. And he was so frustrated that he could not get an equation that would allow him to, quote, read the mind of God. Well, today, we think we have that theory. Well, one of my favorite Einstein stories is when he was so frustrated walking around the streets of Princeton, children, children would flock to see this gray-haired Einstein walk down the streets of their hometown. And one day, you could hear him roar with laughter talking to a 10-year-old child. Well, the mother of this child went up to her son and said, son, what did you say to Einstein that made him laugh so much today? The mother was so proud. And then the son said, oh, I asked him whether he went to the bathroom this morning. Well, the mother was mortified. And then she said, well, then what did Einstein say? And then the little boy said, Einstein said, ah, at last, somebody asked me a question that I can answer. <laughs> well, today, we physicists believe that we are on the verge of being able to summarize the four great forces of nature into a single master theory. The forces of gravity, the forces of electricity and magnetism, the two nuclear forces into a single comprehensive theory, one inch long. First of all, we have the theory of gravity. Gravity keeps you on this floor. Gravity attracts everything around its vicinity to create gravity around the Earth. Or, as we say in our astronomy courses, when we teach our kids, gravity sucks. <laughs> gravity sucks evenly. It pulls everything to the center. But then Einstein gave us a different picture. Gravity doesn't suck at all. We tell our students, we lied to you. Gravity does not pull you to the floor. Space pushes you down. Why are you sitting in your chair today? Does gravity pull you to the floor? No. There is no such thing as gravitational pull. We lied to you. The space around you is warped. And space itself is pushing you down into your chair. And that's why you're sitting in your chair today. And then we have the electromagnetic force. The force of light, laser beams, the force of computers, the force that illuminates this university. And it's absolutely amazing that we can summarize the electromagnetic force into an equation half an inch long. Think about this. The world's wealth tied to the internet, computers, technology, lasers, satellites, can be summarized by an equation half an inch long. That equation says, the four-dimensional divergence of an anti-symmetric second-rank tensor equals zero. And in fact, at Berkeley, where I got my PhD, you can buy a t-shirt which says, in the beginning, God said, the four-dimensional divergence of an anti-symmetric second-rank tensor equals zero, and there was light. <laughs> and it was good. And on the seventh day, he rested. This amazing electromagnetic force allows us to create computers the size of a pinhead. Think about this. In the future, we can take an aspirin pill, put a computer inside, put a camera inside, you swallow this aspirin pill, and it photographs your inside by computers. This eliminates the most dreaded word that every male hates, colonoscopies. And this gives new meaning for the expression, Intel inside. <laughs> Think about it. Chips that cost a penny because of the electromagnetic force. We're putting them in everywhere, 
into our toys, for example. This is creating a problem for the English language, a new contradiction in terms called smart Barbie dolls. Another contradiction in terms is Microsoft works. <laughs> that is also a contradiction in terms. This force, this electromagnetic force, will also be in your glasses in the future. Your glasses will not only be able to download from the internet, you'll have a home office in your glasses, teleconferencing to the office, download any video, download any website in your glasses, including face recognition. Your glasses will be able to recognize people's faces and spit out an entire biography for you. How many times have you been at a conference like this and you bump into somebody and you say to yourself, who is this person? Jim, John, Jake, I know this person. Who is this person? In the future, your glasses will say, it's Jim, stupid, remember? You saw him last week. Do you want to see his entire biography for you in your glasses? Or let's say afterwards, you are mingling with people, and you know there's some very heavy hitters in the audience, and you don't know who they are. In the future, you will know exactly who to suck up to at any cocktail party. <laughs> Compliments of the electromagnetic force. Then we have the nuclear force, the force that lights up the stars. The secret of the heavens is locked in the nuclear force. But every time we smash a proton, and when I was in high school, that's what I did, smash atoms when I was in high school. When you smash atoms, what do you get? More particles. More particles. How many particles are there? Hundreds. Thousands of goddamn subatomic particles. In the 1950s, we were drowning in all these subatomic particles. So, J. Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb, once made a declaration. The Nobel Prize in physics shall go to the physicist who does not discover a new particle this year. Well, I had to memorize the names of all these goddamn subatomic particles to get my PhD. Tau mesons, neutrinos, leptons, muons, Yang-Mills particles, Higgs bosons, thousands of them. I would hope that in the future, when you get your PhD at Berkeley, all you would have to do is say,